Do you wanna stop three putting so you can have tiger-like confidence on the greens? If so, Putting Out of Your Mind by Dr. Bob Rotella, one of the goats of sports psychology in golf, is gonna help you. And I'm gonna take you through this book review where I'm gonna share five game-changing lessons from putting out of your mind so you can walk onto every green with confidence and finally take control of your short game. The first lesson from Dr. Bob's book that I can't stress enough is to find a putter that works well for you. In fact, I spent a whole chapter of my book, Wicked Smart Golf, talking about this as well. Unfortunately, most golfers spend all their time and energy on drivers and irons, which don't get me wrong, are important, but your flat stick is one of the most important clubs in the bag, if not the second or first most important. So we wanna make sure that we have a putter that is right for you. That includes finding the right putter head, the right loft, the right lie angle, and the right grip, depending on how you actually grip the putter. You have to love your putter. And the cool thing with putters is that technology really doesn't change that much compared to drivers or irons. So you can have a putter even a couple years old or five or even 10 years old that still might do the job and might help you actually get out of a putting slump as well. As Dr. Bob said, if you think the putter you're using will help you, it probably will. Conversely, if you think the putter you're using is worthless, it most likely will be. So make sure your putter is giving you tons of confidence. If you haven't done a custom putter fitting yet, I highly recommend it. So that way you can make sure it's the right loft, the right lie, and again, is setting you up for success. If you're going through a slump or maybe just don't have much confidence, consider going back to an old putter or do a fitting and get a new one. The second lesson from Dr. Bob Bertello's book that I just can't stress enough with all my mental golf coaching students is to develop a consistent pre-shot putting routine. If you're serious about playing better golf and shooting lower scores every time you tee it up, you have to have a consistent routine from tee to green. Dr. Bob talks about routines a lot in all of his books because it really is one of the few things that all elite players have in common. And if you think about it, routines aren't just for golf. NFL kickers, before they go through and hit a field goal, are going through a routine. NBA players, before they shoot a free throw, are going through a routine. And so you need that as well, especially with putting. Because a lot of times, putting, we tend to overcomplicate it. We tend to get very negative. Don't miss this putt, don't leave it short. And we're really not setting ourselves up for success. So we wanna make sure that we have a consistent putting routine so that way you can walk into every putt with confidence. A good routine is gonna make sure that you have a committed line. It's gonna make sure that you're really clear about your target, the speed, and hopefully it's just gonna set you up to hit better putts. If you watch professional golf on TV, you will notice they all have a dialed in routine. It's not to say you need to have Scotty's or Tiger's routine, but develop your pre-shot putting routine in practice so that way when you get to the course, it becomes habitual and it's setting you up to make putts instead of standing over it, being fearful, worried, and having a lot of doubt about the putt. The third lesson from Dr. Bob's book that I just love and stress with all players is to always pick a read. So many guys just get up there and they're like, ah, is it left, is it right? They don't really commit. And when you don't commit to a putt, at least for me and what I see with a lot of golfers is that when you aren't committed to a line, it's easy to leave the putt short because you're standing over the ball and you're still thinking about it and you're not really just letting go and trusting the putt. So make sure as part of your green reading routine, you always commit to a line. I always tell players, I'd rather have you commit and then miss versus not commit and hit a bad putt. Because even if you pick the wrong line, you're probably gonna hit a better putt that's gonna give you a chance to actually go in. And hopefully if it's the right speed, it's still gonna be a tap in or a very short putt. But if you're standing over it and you're still thinking, is this left, is this right, is this uphill, is this downhill? It's time to step back and make sure that you evaluate, do a quick green read again, and then commit to it and then walk into the putt. If you're standing over it with doubt, fear, and indecision, this is not the time to pull the trigger. So again, sometimes you do need to pull back and actually reset your routine, and it's gonna make such a big difference. So Dr. Bob talks about this extensively in Putting Out of Your Mind and several other books. So make sure that you're trusting your instincts, not only when it comes to reading greens, but also when it comes to club selection. So if you walk up to a putt and you say, man, this thing is left to right, no doubt about it, stick with it. Don't try and read the putt from multiple angles because then you're gonna think, wow, maybe it is right to left, or maybe it isn't as uphill as I thought, go with your gut. Your instincts are right most of the time. And as I mentioned, you're gonna hit a better putt, which hopefully is going to help you make more. And if you do miss, it's gonna be a lot easier second putt. Before getting into my next Dr. Bob Rotella putting tip, let me ask, do you have a consistent putting routine? Hit the comments down below. The fourth lesson from Dr. Bob Rotella that I just love from putting out of your mind is the importance of practicing short putts. Here's the thing, if you really want to play better, maybe it's breaking 100, breaking 90, breaking 80, or even getting into the 70s and below, we have to make more and more of our short putts. Those are truly the lowest hanging fruit 
on the golf course. And it's one of the things that I just don't feel like enough golfers practice. And instead, we're kind of dragging those two, three, four footers a little bit too often. And then when you get into competition, you actually have to put out those two, three, four footers. It's gonna feel a lot more difficult. If you think about it, even the pros only hit about 67% of greens in regulation. That means they're scrambling more than 30% of the time. And of course, they're hitting a lot of good chips, but they still have to make the putts. So no matter how good you get, missing greens is part of it. And that's gonna require you of course to have a lot of putts inside 10 feet so we want to make sure that we are practicing that area as much as we can I would say 70% of your practice time should be spent inside 10 feet because those are the ones that matter most dr. Bob went on to say in the book that short putts are the equivalent of layups in basketball as he said in the book the short putt, like the layup, is a foundational skill upon which all else is built. It's no coincidence that basketball teams get ready for every game by practicing layups. It's equally true that good golfers make sure their short putting skills are always owned. So make sure we are spending more time in practice inside 10 feet, specifically that three to six foot range, because those are some of the easiest putts that we can get back and hopefully save a lot more shots. And most importantly, keep a lot more momentum. We don't talk about momentum enough during a round of golf, but if you're making those three to six footers a lot, you're able to save par, save bogeys, and you're able to kind of keep that momentum, avoid those blow up holes, and ultimately shoot lower scores. The fifth Dr. Bob Rotella tip from putting out of your mind that I just tell everyone as much as I can is to stop lagging it up. Anytime I'm on the golf course and I hear someone with a putt maybe 30 or 40 feet and they say, yeah, you can just leave the pin in, I'm just trying to lag it up. That is a losing mentality. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you need to try and hit every putt past the hole just to say you got it there, or just so your friends don't tease you and call you Alice. I'm not saying that at all. However, like Dr. Bob talks about in his book, we want to have a make it mentality. When you have a make it mentality, your next putts are gonna be a lot shorter and a lot easier to make. Because here's the thing, so many golfers get up there and they just think, oh, I'm gonna lag it up there into inside a three foot circle. But what you're doing is really expanding that area and not giving your mind a really clear target. So when you're trying to lag it up inside three feet, it's easy to have three, four, five, six footers coming back. But if you try and make it, a lot of times you're actually gonna end up a lot closer and you're gonna have more two, three, and four footers. And every foot closer you are to the hole makes a massive difference in your make rate. For example, the PGA Tour has a make rate of about 90% from four feet, but you take them back to eight feet and even the best players in the world only make about 50% of putts from that range. Needless to say, every foot really does count with putting and so having a make it mentality like Dr. Bob talks about can really help you have closer second putts so we avoid three putting and hopefully are shooting lower scores more consistently. If you're ready to take your putting to the next level, also make sure to download my free 13 page guide called Clutch Putting. I take you through some of the best strategies from my book, Wicked Smart Golf, to help you putt with tiger-like confidence. When you learn these principles and actually apply them to your game and with regular practice, I know you're gonna see results. To learn more, simply click the link in the description or go to wickedsmartgolf.com forward slash clutch and download the free guide and start reading now.